Hideaway by Dean Koontz. So if you know me, you will know that I have something of a love-hate relationship when it comes to Dean Koontz. He has written one of my favorite books of all time. That would be his novel Intensity, what I consider to be his masterpiece. Um, that book just really resonated with me pretty deeply, and it means a lot to me in a personal capacity, and I really, really love that book. However, I will readily and wholeheartedly admit that Dean Koontz has written some absolute shit-tier books. Um, and at this point in the game, he is so far past his prime that he is basically just phoning it in, which is why I don't really read any of his newer books. Uh, but Hideaway here came from his golden age, and what I demarcate as Dean Koontz's golden age is 1980 to 1995. That is the era when he really kind of hit his stride as a writer. After years of struggling, he finally came into his own. And now that's not to say that all the books he released in that time period are classics or even particularly original because Dean Koontz is not a very original writer, but that is the, the era when he put out uh, some of his best work, actually most of his best work, actually. Um, he put out a lot of bangers between 1980 and 1995, um, and Hideaway is one of them. Now, this is actually the basis for that really terrible Jeff Goldblum movie back in the 90s. Uh, in which Dean Koontz makes it very clear in the afterword here that he despised. Um, but uh, the book is much better than that movie. Uh, this is actually one of Dean Koontz's better works. This is a pretty great thriller novel. Uh, however, although it came out within Dean Koontz's golden era, it did prefigure in certain ways, where he would later go after the golden era was over and he moved into much more explicitly religious uh, fiction. In fact, Hideaway is basically a Christian novel, only kind of edgier with sex and violence and uh, profanity in it, but its messaging, its themes are explicitly Christian. Uh, so, uh, take that how you will. But what actually is Hideaway about, if you don't know? So there is uh, this guy named Hatch Harrison uh, and his wife, Lindsay. They are traveling home uh, one night when they have a car accident, and their car runs off in a frozen river, and he dies for a significant amount of time. I think he's dead. I think it says like 80 minutes. He's dead. Uh, and he is resuscitated miraculously and brought back to life, but something happened when he was dead, and now Hatch Harrison, that sounds like a name of a superhero, doesn't it? Hatch Harrison. Now, Hatch Harrison finds that he has some kind of psychic link to a uh, violent serial killer uh, who goes by the name of Vasago. Uh, when the Basago, if you don't know, is one of the crown princes of hell in satanic theology, I think, uh, because Vasago is a Satanist in this book. Uh, but uh, the the crux of the book is that Hatch and Lindsay, uh, they l recently lost a child to cancer and they want to have a family again, so they're trying to adopt this uh, girl this little disabled girl who has some physical impairments. Um, and so they're trying to start up a new family with this girl they're adopting. But then, you know, they're also trying to contend with the fact that uh, Hatch has some kind of inexplicable link telepathically with uh, this serial killer named Visago. And it all leads to a uh, decidedly thrilling climax, which is actually one of Dean Koontz's finest, I think. Uh, but... Uh, so let's talk about the writing in uh, Hideaway. And before I get any farther into the story discussing it, I'm going to say that I will spoil this. So if you don't want this book spoiled, you should leave now or stop uh, at, uh, before I go too much farther into discussing the plot because part of what I think you might want to know about this book has to do with how it ultimately concludes. Uh, but to start out, let's talk about the writing, because Dean Koontz is a far better writer than he is an author. And I, I use that kind of uh, nebulous distinction here 
uh, to denote someone who can craft good sentences and, you know, actually write proficiently, but isn't always the best storyteller and is almost never an original storyteller. That's pretty much Dean Koontz. Um, I'm often kind of in awe a little bit of Dean Koontz's prose in his books because it is decidedly more elevated than your typical mainstream genre thriller fare like Stephen King, Dean Koontz's primary competitor. Uh, you know, Stephen King's prose is notoriously colloquial and kind of plain and uninspired, but Dean Koontz really can craft a good sentence when he wants to, and I think he has, he knows his weaknesses as a writer, and so I think he focuses more energy on where he stands more to succeed, which is the actual writing of the books, and uh, Dean Koontz's writing is pretty good. He, I, he uses words that I have never seen any other writer of this ilk use. Like, I've never heard any other mainstream thriller author use words like deliquesce and affluxion, but he uses them. He does have a pretty good vocabulary, and like I say, he can craft a pretty good sentence when he wants to, so the writing in Hideaway is pretty good. In fact, better than a lot of this kind of book, I would say. Uh, but now let's talk about the characters, because that is where Dean Koontz almost always invariably fails is the characters because Dean Koontz does not really understand uh, character writing very well. Uh, but this book is far stronger in that area than a lot of his other works. Uh, the, the characters of Hatch and Lindsay Harrison are pretty human. Uh, this was definitely, like I said, his golden age uh, when this book came out when he was still bothering to try to make the characters be somewhat recognizably human because later in his career he would just stop doing that. He The good guys in his books now are basically saints. They don't have any hang-ups, um, any shortcomings or serious character defects. They're basically just perfect. Um, in fact, in his book Innocence, I believe, if anybody out there has actually read that, the main character literally, literally is perfect in that book because uh, Dean Koontz thinks that if you are a good guy, that you are literally perfectly good all the time, and if you are a bad guy, you're just uh, despicable with no redeeming qualities and often no rational motivations. Uh, but the characters in this book are better. Now, they are not the finest characters I have ever written. They're kind of bland, but they do behave in a relatively realistic fashion, and they do have a fair degree of emotional uh, flux, I should say. Um, he's not afraid to let the characters curse. He's not afraid to let the characters get angry and, you know, do some things that he would later in his career not do because he doesn't want to let the good characters in his books anymore uh, ever be anything except uh, good without exception. Uh, but he throws in his typical bad childhood uh, in this book uh, because that really is the only way Dean Koontz knows how to craft a character is to give them a really terrible childhood but it doesn't really matter anyway because they're just so perfect that nothing can bring them down. That's how that's how uh, perfect they are. Uh, but he does this in here with the character of Hatch Harrison. His dad was like really kind of mean and abusive, which is a direct reflection of Dean Koontz's own father. Because if you know anything about Dean Koontz, he had a pretty rough childhood uh, growing up. He was dirt poor. I mean, like tar paper shaft level dirt poor, and his dad was a violent psychopath and alcoholic that regularly threatened to kill them all. Pretty traumatic, um, and he definitely has my sympathy for that, but that's really the only trick in his bag when it comes to trying to craft a relatable character is just giving them a really bad childhood, but it never really matters because they don't, it never affects them in any adverse way. But there is the barest hint of some kind of something with the character of Hatch in this book because his dad suffered from really bad anger control issues and there's kind of this ongoing motif throughout the book of him trying not to fall into that same trap, trying to control himself better and be more mellow and um, nice. Uh, so there's that and again like I said the characters do curse, they do kind of behave in ways that later in his career he would never have one of his main characters behave. 
Oh, but let's talk about the character of Visago in here, the satanic uh, serial killer who, like Hatch, the protagonist, uh, was dead at one point and then was uh, resuscitated um, and now um, is just an itinerant serial killer indulging his darkest desires. Uh, this character is actually pretty good, even though if you've read any of Dean Koontz's books, you'll know that it basically just falls into what he normally does, but he does it better than average here. So the way Dean Koontz crafts his antagonists in his books is to give them a certain philosophy of life which they follow, which Dean Koontz will never paint in any kind of ambiguous terms. He will always make it very clear that they are evil. They have no redeeming qualities, that their outlook is despicable. And that's what he does here, but he does it pretty well. Dean Koontz is not a fan of Freudian psychology. He does not like to uh, craft his antagonists based around trauma or pain because he doesn't, because, because his childhood was so bad, but he overcame it and went on to do good things. He doesn't like to make the antagonists of the of his books uh, be evil because of anything that was done to them because Dean Koontz is kind of an individualist. He believes that evil and good come out of each person individually and not due to societal or circumstantial causes. So he doesn't go really in depth with a lot of the psychology of his uh, antagonists. Rather, they're usually driven, like I said, by a certain philosophy. Um, and usually it's some kind of ridiculous, often left-leaning uh, philosophy that is kind of conflated to the point of being ridiculous that you don't really think anybody, even a crazy person, could realistically follow. But it's like in Intensity, in my favorite Dean Koontz book, Intensity, the villain in that book also has a weird life philosophy that he follows, which is actually really well done because it is something that's kind of believable. Uh, but in this book, the main the main villain in this book is just a Satanist because Dean Koontz really only has three villains when it comes to his books. You've got the serial killer, the Satanist, or the government. That's pretty much what he uses for the most of his books, just variations of those three. And here we have the satanic serial killer. And so uh, Visago is a psychopathic kid uh, right from the get-go. He comes out of the womb just a complete psycho, and then he eventually uh, dabbles in Satanism, and then he uh, kills uh, most of his family and a lot of other people, too. And then he kills himself, but he is resuscitated and brought back to life. And when he comes back to life, he has a problem with his eyes, and that was actually really cool. Um, he has a problem with his eyes have degenerated to the point where his pupils can't uh, reduce the dilation. And so he has to wear sunglasses uh, at night because even like moonlight is so bright to his eyes. And that was actually a really nice little touch on Koontz's part because it gave him kind of a creep factor, something bordering on supernatural because this book definitely does go there, especially towards the end, which I'm going to get to. Uh, but that part with him having to wear the sunglasses at night because his eyes can see in the dark but not in the light, that was actually really cool. But the character in this, the, I mean, the, the main character of the villain is pretty good for a Koontz book. I mean, there are Satanists out there, obviously, um, although I doubt most of them resemble this. Uh, but, you know, in Koontz's mind, they do resemble this. And so he's just decrying uh, what he doesn't like. But uh, it works in this book. You do understand how the villain thinks. And it is something that, like, could reasonably be, you know, something that could reasonably happen in real life with a real character like this. So it works. It's pretty good that both the protagonist and the antagonist in this book are pretty remarkably well done for a Koontz book, which is a large reason why this book is, uh, why I say this book is one of Koontz's finest, uh, because he he hits he hits more than he misses with this one. Uh, and the story in this is really thrilling, uh, especially towards the end. The climax of this book was actually really well done. It was very thrilling. Uh, but there is something that happens 
at the end of this book, which will probably turn a lot of people off. So uh, be warned, I'm going to spoil this book right now. So in the in the finale of the book, Hatch and Lindsay have tracked down Visago, who has kidnapped their newly adopted daughter, Regina, and taken her to a fun house, which is his base of operations. That was also something that was really cool, that he his lair is this abandoned fun house. It's abandoned amusement park, I should say, a fun house in a in an amusement park, um, which had a, a a ride called Hell. So there's like statues of like demons and Satan in underneath this uh, amusement park. It's you know it's kind of silly, but it it, it works. It's kind of cool when you're reading it. Um, anyway, so he takes the girl there to sacrifice her and uh, Hatch and Lindsay catch up with him, and then at the end of the book, it is revealed that Visago is not just uh, using the name of a demonic prince. He is actually, I guess, possessed or something. He is also inhabited by a literal demon, and Hatch is inhabited by an archangel, the archangel Uriel, which he brought back with him from the other side when he died and was resuscitated. And so this entire book is not just a psychic link between two people that have died and then been brought back. It is actually a literal battle of angels and demons in this book. And then at the end, Hatch just beats uh, Visago over the head with a crucifix, and then he dies, and that's it. Uh, there's virtually no falling action in this book. Like, it ends at the very last, like, 10 pages of the book. Uh but yeah, so if you're not down with a book about good and evil that's in a very literal and explicitly religious sense, you might not like that. But uh, if you can get over that, this is a really crackerjack book. In fact, to rate Dean Koontz's Hideaway, I'm going to give this a B plus. I really am. I, this is really one of Dean Koontz's best books, or at least among the best that I've read of him, and I've read a lot. Um, and yeah, this is, I, I have more good things to say about this book than I do negative. Um, among the criticisms of this book, uh, the way he writes the little girl in this book is kind of cringy um, because it's so, it's basically Catholic propaganda. And uh, because Coons is very devoutly Catholic, if you didn't know that. And like I said, this book prefigures where he would go later in his career, where he started writing like really, really explicitly heavy, overtoned books about religion, um, and kind of, that really kind of get downright preachy at times. And this really does foreshadow that. Uh, but it's it works in this because he's still not afraid to get dark and gritty and go places that later, like now, Dean Coons would never go. Uh, and the characters are compelling enough. Um, and the writing is pretty good, because like I said, Dean Koontz can craft a pretty good sentence when he wants to, so this book, yeah, I would definitely give Hideaway uh, a B plus. I think it definitely earns that, uh, but uh, it's it's definitely, I think, one of Koontz's finest. So, Hideaway by Dean Koontz. Have you read Hideaway, or have you seen that crappy Jeff Goldblum movie based on this from the 90s that Dean Koontz apparently really hated and does still hate? Uh, let me know down in the comments whether you have read this book or seen the movie, uh, what you thought of the book slash movie, uh, whether you have agreed or disagreed with anything I said about it here today. And if you have not read Hideaway, I could really recommend this if you are in the mood for a fast-paced, although kind of thoughtful in a theological sense, uh, thrill ride, because that's what this book is. It is uh, very thrilling, very well paced too. It's, it's, I think it's not 400 pages, it's 300 something pages, uh, and it moves at a pretty good clip. It's, that's another thing that Dean Koontz is pretty good at, is keeping the story going at a good pace, and this definitely succeeds there, uh, but it does kind of have uh, some themes to it, some messages that a lot of books of this kind would not have, um, and if you're down with that, if you, if you, if you're Catholic or religious in any sense, and you're down with that, uh, yeah, pick this up because it's it, it'll probably uh, be pretty fun for you. Uh, and as always, if you have enjoyed anything you've seen or heard here today, remember to hit that like button and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And until next time, 
Peace.